Hello, my name is uh, John O'Byrne. I'm a consultant in the National Orthopaedic Hospital in Kappa, a professor in RCSI. Um, today, this talk is about a non-surgical um, issue, which is the arthritic knee uh, and non-surgical options for treating it. And although I do uh, several knee replacements, uh, primaries and revisions every week, uh, I uh, want in this talk to emphasize the importance of the non-surgical treatments for knee arthritis. Uh, clearly, knee arthritis is becoming much more common, and that is related to people being more active, people living longer, and increasing body mass index. And this is a diagram showing the normal cartilage on the left and the damaged cartilage on the right. So this exposed area of bone can be a pain generator. The non-operative management of the knee is, uh, of osteoarthritis of the knee, is becoming increasingly important because there is more of it around. And total knee replacement has become one of the most commonly performed surgical procedures. It was the second most common uh, performed surgical procedure in Canada uh, a few years ago. Um, but because of this, people feel that maybe there's a lower threshold for doing a knee replacement. But in fact, it's really important to acknowledge and to emphasize that knee replacement is still the operation when the conservative measures have failed. And some patients will approach with fairly early osteoarthritis that hasn't really exhausted conservative measures and want a knee replacement because there has been good advances and there has been particularly good advances in terms of people getting through the surgery with less pain and less blood loss and a more rapid rehabilitation. So the concern about that is that it drops the bar, if you like, or drops the threshold at which people would have a knee replacement. So I'm cautioning very much against that and say that you must absolutely exhaust the conservative measures, which are muscle strengthening, things like weight management, lifestyle, etc. And <clears throat> these are the sort of mainstays, if you like. So physical therapy or physiotherapy, uh, building up the muscles around the knee, really important. Uh, we did a study a few years ago in Kappa, uh, in conjunction with TCU, looking at the benefit of what we called prehabilitation. So in other words, we got patients who were on a waiting list for knee replacement to do very specific targeted exercises. So they did fairly uh, intensive quads and hamstring exercises every day under supervision. And some of them improved so much that they actually deferred their knee replacement surgery. So these were clearly patients who had end-stage arthritis who improved dramatically with just conservative measures. Weight reduction, <clears throat> clearly a, an issue and increasing all the time. The body mass index, the average body mass index of our patients is going up all the time. Um, they can still have knee replacements up to a certain level. Clearly the complication rate is a little higher and clearly it's a little more difficult and clearly the failure rate is, is probably a little bit uh, higher. Uh, but in general, if people can get their weight down, it's going to help them with their knee arthritis. And then analgesia, and clearly that's judicious use of analgesia, and we don't really want to just uh, put people on very high uh, doses of very strong painkillers or anything like that. Then when you start getting into what to do when these things fail and you start getting to more interventional options, we're going to talk about in injection arthroscopy. On, on this talk, I'm not going to talk about joint replacement, although that's what I predominantly do in terms of partial or total knee replacement. But for this talk, I want to talk about the non-arthroplasty options. So again, the pain generators of osteoarthritis, that's the drawing that we looked at at the start where it's quite clear that there's bone exposed. So clearly bone being exposed and weight bearing can cause pain. And you get this subchondral bone lesions. Um, the other thing that you get is you get a synovitis. So you get an inflammation or an irritation of the synovial uh, membrane. And that can be sometimes because probably of small fragments of articular cartilage, but there is an inflammatory process or an inflammation that, that causes pain. So that if you're looking at these two different types of osteoarthritis, where you've got an OA with inflammation, where they've got an effusion, when they exercise, they've got the morning stiffness, versus the sort of very um, dormant, but uh, kind of dried out uh, osteoarthritis, they're two kind of different situations. And, we used to scope a lot of patients with um, arthritis. It's not really done so much now. Um, and when you looked inside it, you would see that the, the synovium was very inflamed. And we still see it with patients that we do knee replacements on, that they're very, in, very inflammatory, red, inflamed synovium. 
And those sort of patients, i.e. the ones on the left, as we look at this slide, they're the ones who can do well with a, a corticosteroid injection. So there are a few different types of injections that we give, and these are a little bit, I'll talk a little bit about them. So corticosteroids or, or cortisone or steroids, local anesthetic, then hyaluronic acid. There's a variety of these, they're called visco supplements. And then platelet-rich plasma, which I'll talk about. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've put cellular therapy there on the slide to exclude it, because there's no evidence that it has any reasonable, decent long-term effect or even short-term effect. Stem cells are harvested from fat or from bone marrow, which is quite intrusive. And even in studies where they show that they have uh, actually acquired really good stem cells and inject them, even in those studies, the evidence is very weak that it does anything useful. Corticosteroid, this is for those patients with the slightly inflamed knee, it's tender, which they've got a little bit of fluid. So Depametron, 40 or 80 milligrams, and mark in 0.25. Uh, there is an, uh, some evidence that mark in 0.5% can cause some damage to cartilage. It's, uh, it's experimental evidence, but for that reason, we tend to use 0.25. I injected in the supralateral area, just into the, uh, into the suprapatellar pouch. It's a very uh, reliable way of getting into the knee joint cavity. The next injection, hyaluronic acid, visco supplements. There's a few different brand names for this and there's a, a few different versions of it. Um, essentially, hyaluronic acid is one of the proteins in articular cartilage and articular cartilage, um, as you weight bear, load the cartilage and unload the cartilage, there is a movement of fluid in and out of the articular cartilage. So it's not this inert uh, subsurface that, that never um, changes. It does change in terms of fluid that moves in and out of the joint. And the fluid generally comes from synovial fluid. So <clears throat> if you give hyaluronic acid, the theory is that you're treating the cartilage. There's some evidence that it can reduce the pain, improve function, retain the water, and lubricates the joint. And one of the studies that <clears throat> impressed me the most is this one in a study of 182,000 patients with osteoarthritis of the knee. Hyaluronic acid uh, delayed the total knee replacement by an average of 3.6 years which is uh, fairly reasonable. The next injection is platelet-rich plasma. <clears throat> this is a tissue, this is a, when you distill down plasma and use it to uh, stimulate tissue healing and regeneration. So th there's a few benefits to that. One is that it's the patient's own blood, which is processed. And essentially what happens in any time there's an injury, uh, all these growth factors that are in the patient's serum all localize around that injury to stimulate regeneration and healing. And these are the growth factors that we are getting out of the uh, that out of the patient's blood. We're getting them in a concentrated form, and then we're injecting them into the area where there is arthritis. It's been shown to biologically stimulate stem cells and also cartilaginous cells. So it's been shown to have some activity in terms of tissue regeneration. <clears throat> if you look at the use of literature, uh, the use of uh, PRP throughout the orthopedic literature. You can see from the early 2007 there to 2015, <clears throat> excuse me, massive increase in the amount of PRP that's used. And that is even increased even further. This is what it's involved. So there is the blood being harvested, uh, just a blood sample taken, uh, put in these little test tubes, put into a centrifuge, which is spun around for five minutes. Then you take it out and you've got it looking like this which is the pure uh, plasma, which has all the growth factors. These are the platelets at the bottom. You invert it a few times to get the platelets and the plasma mixing. Uh, there is a version that I use that also has hyaluronic acid, so that mixes with it as well. <clears throat> you put it in a syringe and you inject it. This is basically what the little centrifuge looks like. It's about the size of a toaster and it spins it for five minutes and then you inject it. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> So the PRP injections, they reduce the pain, improve the function if there's a lower degree of osteoarthritis. So not if there's very uh, advanced bone on bone. And we've seen patients who've been um, sent off or have gone off and had stem cell treatment at a huge personal expense uh, and their x-ray shows bone on bone. So really not appropriate. And PRP is appropriate for an earlier form of osteoarthritis to try and stimulate some regeneration if there is still cartilage. If it's bone and bone, there's no point in doing that. I combine it with a version that has hyaluronic acid as well. 
So it's not an expensive uh, treatment and it's relatively straightforward to do and with relatively low morbidity. So when is knee replacement surgery indicated? This is the answer. When all the conservative measures have failed and that is the activity modification, the weight control, physiotherapy, medication and, and injection therapy will include that in conservative treatment. Um, and the symptoms are very significantly disruptive. And by that, I mean significant pain and significant impacts on activities of daily living. And in recent years, uh, there certainly has been, have been people that have uh, come in to my clinic uh, with not that much disruption. Um, and, you know, they may be you know, able to walk five or six kilometers a day, but then they're sore or they're sore going up and down the, the stairs. Um, they haven't really, um, they have tried some of the conservative measures, but, but they feel that their pain is sufficient to warrant surgery. And I have to say, you know, again, it depends on the patient, but you must be very clear with the patient that knee replacement is not always guaranteed to totally reduce the pain. And it can be associated with a disappointing out outcome for the patient. So if they're not very symptomatic beforehand and they become symptomatic with a painful knee replacement, they'll be very, very disappointed. So it's important, they don't need to be in agony, but clearly they need to have a, a level of pain and a level of disruption of their activity of daily living uh, that warrant them going through the risks of having a knee replacement and the, the statistics and the percentages of successful outcome. So total knee replacement should still be a last resort because there are percentages that are dissatisfied. Now, I have to tell you, and I have to emphasize uh, that when it's done as a last resort, I have found that the percentage of satisfied patients is much higher than that. So once the patient is counseled beforehand, when they're very symptomatic, when they've tried all the conservative measures, I've never met a patient who actually wants to have a knee replacement per se, uh, although some patients will come along saying they've tried everything, they're really struggling and uh, a knee replacement with those patients when they have significant disruption is a successful procedure. However, again, as I say, a last resort when you've tried all the other conservative measures. Thank you very much.